Hey, welcome to Mario Details. I'm Nick. And I'm James. 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 Your voice? Are you okay? What do you mean? You under the weather? What do you mean? <laughs> it's not fine. Uh, so, <laughs> I wanted to do a little impromptu podcast this week. Uh, we have Emily Ingle on the podcast. Hey, everyone. Um, Emily is the editor at Course 87 and also my girlfriend. That's right. <laughs> and she is a key part in the... Um, in the whole Dita Rams story. So uh, James was busy and he was like, you should just bring Emily in because she helped out a lot into the, the whole meeting of of the legend. So I'm just a replacement, James, but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I, uh, we actually had a, have a podcast plan for next week, but I really wanted to just sit down and kind of collect all of my thoughts on the Dieter Rams uh, interaction. I just, it's amazing. I'm still getting giddy about it right now. I just can't believe that I actually got to meet him. Start from the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah, so, I mean, I guess you and I have seen the Rams documentary. We saw it at Mm -hmm. SVA the first time. Mm -hmm. Um, And you actually wrote an article about the Rams documentary. Yeah, I did. I actually interviewed the director, Gary Hustwit, and then I kind of <laughs> I kind of ended up recording the Q&A session after because it was so good, and it was with Mark Adams from Bitsu and Gary um, Hustwit. And then after that, I interviewed Gary a second time and kind of compiled everything into one juicy article. <laughs> right. And so this was, what, a week ago? Yeah, I'd say I published it about a week ago. Okay. Um, okay. And, and it was a great article. If you guys haven't seen it, Check it out on Core Same Seven, um, and yeah, you. I, I guess uh, Mark from Vitso contacted you and said he loved the article and that yeah. he should you should come back to another showing. Is that what happened, or well, had you already of. planned? So what happened was Gary um, ended up reading the article and I guess liking it because all of a sudden I got in my email inbox an invitation to a screening at MoMA, and I figured, oh, I've seen it once, but you can't beat seeing it at the MoMA, <laughs> so. I um, I RSVP to that, and then a couple weeks later, uh, actually yesterday, I did get an email from Mark from Bitsu, and he said, oh, come find me at this event, and right. I said, okay, sure, I'll see you there. Yeah, now, now and, before this, though, so Emily, Emily said that she was going to go to see the Rams documentary mm-hmm. for the second time. Yes. And you, you asked me if I would like to go. I did, I did ask you. And I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, I sure or something like that. I said I kind of gave like a. <laughs> it was very ambivalent. Yeah, uh, or ambiguous, right? Ambiguous. Uh, a big ambiguous answer of like, I was working on other something something else at the time, and I wasn't like fully attentive, and so you kind of took that as like a oh he's maybe not interested, and uh, so I guess you gave your plus one to your coworker at Course Name Seven, yeah, Allison. Allison. And so. <laughs> I, I hadn't forgot about it. Like, I remember you telling me about the Rams documentary. I was like, oh, were you going to still going on the Rams documentary? And you're like, oh, no, I already gave the ticket away. And I was like, oh. Like, I was sad. <laughs> um, but then you, you... You were kind of sad. I was kind and of sad. Then, and then you also said that it was a special event. Yeah, it was special because I found out that Dieter Rams actually going to be there. Right. And then I was really <laughs> sad. Like, oh, I really messed up. I should have been... Johnny on the spot with that Lesson invite. learned. Lesson you gotta learned, take yeah. me up on these invites. <laughs> but then I kind of figured, you know, I love Dieter Rams, but you know who really loves Dieter Rams <laughs> is Nick. <laughs> so you, you pulled some strings. I did, and I, I got an extra ticket you for got, him. You, you pulled out your press badge. I did. I hate doing that, but for this, it was worth it. Yeah. And I got Nick an extra ticket, and we went, and sure enough, he was there in the flesh. As soon as we walked into the theater, we saw his gleaming white head of hair. Yeah, and his glasses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was, so so iconic. It was majestic. And we were, like, trying to keep calm, looking over our shoulders. Everyone was, like, looking over their shoulders to see him. I was not doing it calmly. <laughs> I was blatantly staring at him the entire time. 
Um, but then he got up on onto the the podium mm-hmm. and gave a quick little remark before the film started, mm-hmm. which I thought was really nice. I think the one post I did on my story was him speaking about the uh, ten principles of good design. You captured the perfect moment. I, I did. It was like a fun little. I was impressed. It was a fun little um, quip. But Dieter Rams walked up there and he said, you know, he, he started talking about his the film and Gary and everything, and then. Um, he said, yeah, the Ten Principles of Good Design is not, it's not the Ten Commandments. It's just a friendly recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so good because the thing about him that you could see in the documentary, but we weren't clear on if he was like this in person. He's serious, but he's so serious that there's kind of like this hint of humor to him at the same time. <laughs> and he seems, he's like really nice too. I mean, he, his his German, I mean, he's very German and his English is is okay i mean it's not perfect or anything mm-hmm. so it's he talking to him was you know uh, maybe a, a a little bit of a barrier but still doable and i thought that it was really nice how he actually did go up and speak before the film he definitely didn't have to do that so yeah, yeah. nice touch um but yeah that was that was exciting and obviously i was sitting there like all nervous for the entire event because all i all all that was on my mind was like, I have to meet him. Well, the other part of this is the book. Right. So, so you know, Emily got the ticket for me, you know, after pulling all the strings. And I was like, well, maybe I should get his book, Dieter Rams. No, don't Dieter do Rams, it. <laughs> Dieter Rams' book. And I was like, I'm going to go run out right quick and find a bookstore and find it right quick. But Emily is so nice. She had already <laughs> got me the Dieter Rams book for Christmas as a gift. And so she's like, no, I, I, I have one. It's in the, uh, don't worry about it. I'll get it. <laughs> and then, you know, you spoil, you spilled the beans instead of his early Christmas gift. I can't keep, I'm not good at surprises or secrets. So it kind of just came out yeah. and Christmas came early for Nick. But I mean, well <laughs> worth it. hundred percent for sure. Okay. So then after the film, should we talk about the film a bit? Um, yeah. I mean, we, I think I th- you kind of did already. I, I discussed it a little bit, but like, you know, the Dieter Rams documentary, really great. Uh, seeing it the second time, I think I enjoyed it even better. I feel Me like too. it soaked it up a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, Dieter talked all about his career and kind of, uh, he, uh, part of the film is really geared more toward like his philosophy and how he sees the world now, mm-hmm. especially with tech and how, you know, people are just staying at the phones nowadays and this is not good design, you know? So, you know, it's always like, it's kind of like a bittersweet film in that way. It's not like a happy part. I mean, there's plenty of happy parts, but like, there's always that like little tinge of like, like, yeah, but things aren't okay. And he was very serious about that. But, um, one of the most interesting things I thought from a director's standpoint or an editing standpoint is that I think some of the feedback that Gary got about the film was that people left wanting more. Mm. It was did they make the film longer? I didn't notice. Barely. So uh, he did end up making changes to it. Mm-hmm. He would splice in some scenes here and there. From the first showing, like yeah, a, a month yeah. ago. And then we just watched it and mm-hmm. he actually added things in. And he told me that he was going to do that because he was unhappy with it <laughs> in SBA. So <laughs> you can tell he's very, you know, obsessive in a great way about right. his films. And so he gave even more of a glimpse with like these little details, the minor details. The minor. <laughs> You're already picking up on the podcast. Nice. And uh, he added them in there, and that was very nice, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the film was great. At the end, everyone gave uh, Dita Rams and Gary and the whole team a standing ovation. Um, I mean, it was just, when you walked in the room, into the theater, you could, there was just like this feeling of mm-hmm. Dieter. Like, you could feel him in there. And I really never felt that before. It was weird. It, it's, a, it's a very strong presence. That also... He has. <sighs> I apologize because my mom's listening right now and she has no clue who Dita Rams is. <laughs> uh, quick disclaimer, Dita Rams is the most famous industrial designer. Mm. Um, you know, he is the Beatles to industrial design. Good music reference. Mm-hmm. I'm proud of you. I, I know music. Movies, I'm not, not so much. Yeah. Um, some would say he's the father of industrial design. Some argue that. I don't know how I, true. Well, I consider Raymond Lilly the father of industrial design. That's also he's, fair. He was kind of the first guy to really pioneer it. And make it a thing, but Dieter Rams mm-hmm. is definitely the most famous industrial mm-hmm. designer and mm-hmm. the most influential. As, mm-hmm. um, uh, but, um, 
Right. So finish the film. We finished the film and everybody swarmed the poor man. Yeah. Everyone was running up to him, all of that. And we were guilty of kind of like sneaking our way over a bit. Yeah. But then we kind of stopped ourselves and we're like, what are we doing? This poor guy. He just sat there and watched himself be like <laughs> bowed down to on a screen for two hours. And he must be so overwhelmed. So we kind of, he walked by us and actually snuck out the back and we just let him go. Right. And so and at, at that moment... It was like I had built up all this like I don't know energy, and I was like I really hope I get to meet him, and like yeah. I was like really excited. I had the book and everything, and it was kind of like a oh well, you know. It almost came together. At least we got to see him in person. Like at least we yeah. got to see him speak. You know, so like there was a little bit of like a a lull there, and it was a little sad. But um, there was an after party. Yeah, there was, um, which. I mean, we didn't even know what to expect. It was a 20-minute walk, so we were like, oh, you know, we'll, we'll just go, go. Yeah. and see what happens. Yeah. And I had heard that Mark from Bitsu was going to be there, and um, we figured I should still say hi to him because I didn't get to do that yet. Right. And so we, we walked in the cold all the way there. We got there. Um, it was at a hotel. Was it the Empire Hotel? I think so, the yeah. The Empire Hotel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we went all the way to the top, and it was totally empty we were the first ones there <laughs> well i, I, I kind of want to be first because yeah. you know just in case just, just in case he Dieter decided okay. to like show up and also at this point we were thinking the poor man is like in his late 80s he just wants to go home and sleep yeah, and right. the time difference i don't know how long he's been in new york but the time difference must have been such a killer right so like it was like it was fun. like i mean it was still a good gift like being able to see Dieter Rams talk and like then you gave me this wonderful book and I was like, oh, I'm still happy and we get to go to a, a little after party. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're at the after party, just hanging out, uh, talking talking to people and, um, you know, maybe about an hour in, hour in or half hour in. I would say in. 45 minutes to an hour in. He walks in. All of a sudden, he was there. And then, and, and then, you know, my heart starts pounding again. It's like, oh no, oh. Boy. Nick didn't speak for like those two minutes that we saw him. I and... no, I remember like we were all sitting and chatting, and I see him come in, and literally, like, I'm just like not talking. Like I just like all I can focus on now is like, oh, this is it. This is the moment. Yeah, and I looked over from a response for you. I think we were like talking, and you were just like, <laughs> you didn't know what to do. Uh huh. So. But I mean, I gotta I gotta commend you, Emily, because you were the you were the plug. I'm learning all my hype beast terms. Plug I'm is teaching a hype, him, hype beast term. Yeah, plug. Um, for those of you who don't know what plug is, it means the person who helps to get you something. Usually sneakers. Right. Um, but in this case, I guess it's a Dieter Rams <laughs> ticket. Um, but uh, yeah, so. You know, we're sitting there waiting until Dieter gets all settled in, and he goes sits down with his glass of wine and his posse. Yeah, he um, did have a he had a crew. Yeah, he had a crew. Um, kind of like Johnny. Yeah, I, yeah, but maybe like a little older. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, um, but uh, yeah, so he sits down. We're enjoying drinks, and uh, and you, like you said, had written this great article about. Um, Thank Gary you. Huswitz and her, her, I forget his name. It's so hard to say his last name. Gary Huswit. You kind of just have to cut yourself off at the end. Right, <laughs> Huswit. And uh, Mark um, from the CEO of Vitso. I don't think he's a CEO, but he's definitely the one who like just the makes head. all of the things right. happen. And he was actually in the movie. Like, he starred he in the Rams movie. He was, like, in a good portion of it. Yeah, he knows Dieter very well um, because they work together all of the time. And if they're not in person, they're always calling each other. Um and they have a very funny relationship. It's kind of hard to explain unless you see the film. You know that part when he, when Dieter said he wanted the board oh, sanded, yeah, yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. he was like, "Okay, everyone, we have to sand this." So it's like yeah. he he does everything that Dieter wants because it's kind of humorous that he I don't know how yeah. to explain. Well, I mean, I think that that kind of plays into one of the biggest things that I got out of sitting and talking with Dieter. Right. But but we'll, you know we'll say we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but yeah, so it, it's time. Dieter's settled in. Like he he's had his wine. It's been like thirty minutes. He's calmed down. There's I no think, one like talking to him too intensely. He's not swarmed. And uh, I think I actually said it's time, and then we yeah, walked over. <laughs> yeah, Emily turns to me because I'm like frozen solid. Like I'm a I'm a I'm a rock. I don't know what to do. And Emily turns to me. and She's like, "It's time, Nick. We should go." 
And so I'm like, okay, you lead the way. I can't do this. I'm so nervous. I'm shaking. <laughs> um, and so we had it all planned out. Because, we did. Because you were going to go talk, got, talk to Mark because mm-hmm. you had written this article and Mark really liked it. And you guys had exchanged mm-hmm. emails. And it was going to be a perfect segue to be like, hey, Mark, can can we... Can you introduce us to Dita Rams? Yeah, and it's it's all about timing. I saw he wasn't talking to anybody, and you just got to slide right in there right, <laughs> and, right. and introduce yourself. So, yeah, we did. We introduced ourselves to Mark. Mm-hmm. Very nice person. Yeah. Oh, he's he's a fun British guy. He is. He has, he has that British humor for sure. He does. Uh, he was asking some pretty funny questions and personal questions, too. He got, like, pretty personal with his questions, which I thought yeah. was nice. He yeah. actually seemed to care. Um, mm-hmm. Anyways, so... Finally, I was like, you know, is it appropriate for us to introduce ourselves to Dieter? Is that something that people do? Because <laughs> he was just kind of sitting there like all mafia style, like with yeah. his cane in front of him and his group and right. like a kiss the ring situation. But um, so finally he was like, oh, don't worry, I'll introduce you. Yeah. And so, yeah, so this was the moment we walk over, you know. We're, we're talking to Mark, and, you know, we're only maybe, like, five, six feet away from Dieter Rams, mm-hmm. and so we just kind of turn around and walk over, and, and you know, Mark, like, kind of interjects into whatever Dieter was talking talking with another person and says, hey, you know, would you like to meet the editor of Course Name 7? Because, first of all, this is not a, d- a design party where anyone knows who I am. <laughs> These are all old people. These are all, like, film people. Everyone roles knows, are reversed. <laughs> yeah, roles are reversed. Everyone knows Emily because Emily is Course Name 7, and you know, Course Seven Seven is like this amazing, huge blog for industrial design. Um, so you know, Emily is the important person here, right? <laughs> so Mark, Mark's like, you know, hey, Dieter, would you like to meet Emily? She wrote an amazing article um, about <laughs> about your uh, film on Course Seven Seven, and Dieter was like, oh, what did he say? He said, what what, what book, book? What book is that? Like, and I was like, oh, I'm. And Mark explained, oh, it's actually an online publication. And he just kind of looks at us for a second and goes, oh, online. And he pauses and just goes, I prefer books. <laughs> and I was like, you know what, Dieter, you couldn't let me have this moment. I was more important than Nick for like five minutes. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. So, um, no, I'm kidding. But, uh, yeah, so... I knew that this was this should be all about Nick because <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care about what I do. What I do doesn't really have much relevance to him. So um, I talked to him for maybe two minutes and then we kind of switched. Yeah, off yeah, a bit. yeah. So yeah. like we were, we were, ch- you were chatting with him and I was kind of like you were there, kind of squatting down next next to you and like you know just trying to soak up all the knowledge. He, he all he does is drop knowledge. I, he, he, I don't know. It's just every like, word from his mouth. <laughs> just like gold. I don't know. Right? Like, you had asked him, I think your question that you asked him was like, oh, this is kind of funny. You were like, is there any hope for society or something like that? Yeah, and that's exactly what I said. And he said, he just kind of shook his head and was like, no. <laughs> I kind of think it was part of the language barrier, but maybe yeah. I don't think he fully understood. But if if he did just say no, it totally went with his whole you know, <laughs> impending doom <laughs> um, vibe. But. but yeah, I did the old like switcheroo of like, oh, hey. Do you guys want a picture together? <laughs> and so, like, I, I quickly took a picture of you guys. And with then, the flash on. <laughs> yeah, with the flash on. I was obnoxious. I was like... <laughs> no, no, it was fine. <laughs> the picture turned out really well, and he seemed totally cool with it. Yeah. So. And, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like it, this person that is... He, he's very old, but he's also, yeah. like, legendary. You're, like, mm-hmm. trying to, like, make sure it's all perfect. And and you're trying like, to make sure he's okay. Yeah, it's like, I, I don't want to do anything you don't want to do. <laughs> like, let's just make this per- I respect everything you say, you know? Because he is very quiet until you speak to him, so you just don't really know what he's thinking. Yeah. Um, anyways. But, yeah, so I, I did the take the picture, and then I was like, well, can I get a picture too? Right? And you then, know, the, yeah, the switcheroo. That, that was a whole switcheroo. So that I snuck in there, sat right next down to Dieter Rams. And, so let's get to the good part where you actually sit down and talk to him, because I think yeah. that's what people want to hear. Yeah, I mean, we talked for a good while. I mean, I would say it was 15 minutes or so. I think it was 15 minutes. And, yeah, I mean, he was just, you know, first of all, I told him, like, hey, I'm an industrial designer. Thank you so much for just being a huge influence on this community. I mean, everyone looks up to you and values your principles and, um, you know, sees your work and says, like, this is this is what we all should be aspiring to. And, you know, I try to just try to, like, you know, show my gratitude toward him and, um, 
as, as much as I could. I know that there was probably a little language barrier, and he probably didn't get every word, but I think he got the gist. He knew enough, I think. Yeah. And yeah, I told him, like, I was an industrial designer, and um, I don't know, he would just, he just started talking to me about, like, <laughs> the film and everything, and um, I think uh, the, the biggest thing that he said was, he said, you know, I'm just lucky. And, you know, I, I kind of mentioned this on some of my other things, but it was funny that to hear him say that because it's it's not that he was lucky in his designs. It's not like mm-hmm. his his designs were just like, oh, hey, this is good design. He's just lucky. Like, oh, this design was just lucky. No, it, what he meant by that is like he was lucky that he was able to find, you know, Braun and Vitzo and really connect with the executives there to see out his vision. You know, Mark at Vitso and uh, I think Erwin and I think the other brother at Braun, mm-hmm. they really just understood the value of good design and understood that, you know, you, taking in Dieter's philosophy was the best business move for them. And I believe, too, they're one of the first companies to put an industrial designer at the front of the company. So he was kind of the face there for a little bit. Yeah, um, like during the movie, they kind of talk about how at, at some point, like, everyone started calling Dieter Rams Mr. Braun. Yeah, um, and he was in all the commercials looking all moody with his cigarettes <laughs> and, and flared pants. But, um, yeah, essentially they just made a decision to put design first, and he was the head of that. And so he be, he kind of became this figure in the limelight. And now it's interesting because he's doing the opposite. He's kind of faded away in his living. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's very private yeah. in his in his lifestyle. I mean, he's offline. Mm-hmm. Doesn't even have a computer. I don't think. Right. He has a he has a neighbor who manages his online presence in a way. I think she was my favorite person <laughs> that we met. His business manager, and I, I I feel so bad. I can't remember her name, but I asked her. She was in the film for a minute, and I I asked her while Nick was talking to her. I was distracting her, so yeah. Nick could keep talking. But essentially, I asked, you know, how do you know Dieter? What is this relationship like? How do you know each other? And she said that um, she's very good friends with his wife, and they've known each other for 20 years, I think, because they're neighbors. They're like next-door neighbors. And when he retired, he didn't really have much to do. And he basically, she described it as his wife came to her and said, you know, Dieter is an amazing designer. Right. He can't do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> he, he can't do math necessarily. He can't manage his finances. Right. Like, he needs some serious help. Right. And no one really wanted to take him on. I don't know. I don't think there's any particular reason, but she ended up taking him on as her only client. So she travels with him, manages his online action. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, but um, so you kept talking to him. Yeah. And, um, and, and like uh, he, he talked about how he like just really connected with these executives and they really sought out his vision of good design. You know, it, it, all of his work would be nothing without the the executives implementing it um and then like <laughs> for whatever reason there was a lady that walked by and kind of jutted into our, our conversa- conversation in a very awkward way <laughs> yeah I, you know i i'm sure she wanted to meet Dieter as of well of course yeah um you know i think her questions might not have been as design related but uh she, <laughs> she just like says so Dieter, did you say it was less is better or less but better <laughs> and <laughs> Which, I mean, anyone who knows, it's less but better. Um, but Dieter, he said, less but a little bit better. <laughs> and I just thought that was interesting. Like, because, you know, I, I the way I kind of see that and my interpretation of that is that it is just an evolution. It's just making things just a little bit better. Mm. Um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Good design isn't reinventing the wheel. Good design isn't like building up this crazy innovation it's just like taking an existing product and making it just a little bit better Hmm. um so yeah i mean i i really like that and i mean he kind of talked about it a little bit i also try to get out of him like a little bit about like him working like on the specifics of some of the products because i I know the the language barrier yeah like it just didn't work because i was like asking him about like there's a part in the movie where he talks about this little like piece of paper on the radio was glued on instead of printed on 
And I was like, so do you remember that radio? And I don't think it connected with him. But right then, the book. Yes. So so I'm sitting there, right? And, you know, we've had a good, a good you know, 10-minute talk or so. And I obviously really want to get this book signed as well. Um, and, I, you know, I ask him, hey, Dieter, can, you know, I, ha- I brought my book. Can, would you, if you're interested, you know, no pressure or anything. You're very polite about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I know. I just was like trying no, like. No, that's a good oh, thing. Please. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was like, would you like to sign it? And he was like, okay, yeah, go get it or whatever. And so I go over and I can grab it out of my bag and I bring it bring it back. And he said, oh, no. He said, which one did you get? Did you get the right one? And I was like, oh, no, there's a right one. <laughs> and so I go grab it and he's like, oh, no, that's the wrong one. <laughs> I got Nick the wrong book, everyone. <laughs> well, well, to be fair, this is the book that I wanted. Yeah. So you got the right book for me, but you got the <laughs> book that Dieter doesn't like. <laughs> But I think it's interesting why he doesn't like it. So essentially, he's happy with the words, you know. Right. So, so the one that the one that Emily got me is Dieter Rams, as little design as possible, and it um, it's pretty thick. It's like mm-hmm. two inches thick, maybe. It's one a and nice, half inches. sturdy coffee table book. Yeah, it's it's the book that you would want. You know, it's the design book that you would want. But Dieter was talking to me about it, and he was like, um, "Well, well, first he signed it." And we'll, we'll maybe show a picture or a video of it, but there it is, right next to his, his photo, um, which was awesome. And then he was like talking. He was talking to me about like, you know, I don't like this book because because it's too thick. They added in pictures just to make it thick because thick books sell better. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. Dieter Rams does not like fight on. <laughs> that that is a uh, just a um, that's like just a. Uh, a designer thing to say but i think the coolest part about that though is when he started showing you all of the pages that he didn't like in particular and why yeah i mean he started pulling up pages and the ones that he because there's like tons of photos in this book and the ones that he didn't like were the ones that you know were essentially like filler photos like there was some photos of um of like the warehouse where they kept a lot of brown products like I mean, this this picture right here is just. I mean, I'm showing it on the on the camera. I don't know if I'll I'll do a video of this or not, but um, you know, it's just like I, I don't know. He he was like just looking at. He was like pointing at this page, and then he was like, "See this? There's none of my products even in here. There's just stacks of paper and a filing cabinet. This is the warehouse. Why do we need to show this in my book?" <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, "This is a uh, you know like obtrusive and everything." And you know, I'm all into it. Like I'm like Dieter, you you know what to do. Rip those pages out. I tell him, like, Dieter, rip them out. Rip them out. I wish that he had. I I, almost... I, I wish he did, too, just for the heck of it, <laughs> for the story. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, uh, he didn't rip them out. And uh, we kind of finished up chatting, and that's, that's uh, that was it. I kind of stood up, and I, I said, thank you again, shook his hand again, and we kind of walked away. Um and it was amazing. I don't know. Like after that moment, I was just like on the on a high, and you were. It just felt like I, I fulfilled, like a checkbox on my wish list. You know. Mm, good. Um, yeah, definitely best Christmas gift ever. <laughs> <laughs> good. I'm glad. And then and then right before we left, I mean, we hung out at the after party for a little bit longer, and obviously other people talked to Dieter Rams, and um, you know, it's it's crazy because, like. He probably meets thousands of designers just like me, mm-hmm. like just wanting to meet him and being so in, enthralled in it. And, you know, I, you know, like I said, I was just happy to like get to see him talk on stage. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I thought maybe I would even get to do a photo and a signing and just a handshake. But I actually got to sit down with him for like 15 minutes <laughs> and like talk design with him, which is just amazing. And I, I hope that you guys listening to this now could get a little bit of um, inspiration out of that and obviously Dieter Rams isn't online the one thing I oh the one last thing I did say before I got up was you know again I kind of thanked him and then I also like mentioned like hey I have 70,000 people who who follow me I was kind of like relating it like I was like you know Dieter you are my inspiration well I have 70,000 people who see me mm-hmm. as an inspiration and I hope that I can pass your inspiration to, to them and so, like, I kind of try to, like, relay that. 
because his whole thing now is trying to pass on his legacy. Right. He's he's done designing. Right. He doesn't care about design anymore. He's mm-hmm. like trying to pass on his philosophy down. And he was so concerned that no one cared and that no one wanted to hear it. And the whole reason they got him to do this documentary was, you know, this is your chance. This while is you're it. still here, while you're still alive and functioning, mm-hmm. you need to tell people what you believe. Yeah. And and so I I feel like when I told him about my Instagram, I mean, I didn't say Instagram. I just said, <laughs> I just said online. And uh, he, I feel like his eyes lit up a little bit, and he was a little, he was a little, he perked up like he he had some interest, like mm-hmm. oh wow, well, you know, mm-hmm. I think he like mentioned like oh well, we can figure out the right book. <laughs> he was worried about the book. He was like, I'll get you the right book. You know, I'll talk to my business manager. We'll get you the right book. <laughs> his business manager, and when I when I said goodbye to her, she said, okay, you know how to find me. I'm like, no, I don't. I'm like, tell me how to find you, please. <laughs> and so you don't have her email or anything. No, nothing. I'm gonna have to ask Mark or something. Yeah. Well, it, I'm sure that. Anyways. you're you are well connected. You're high up there on the totem pole. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we we stayed at the party a little longer, and then. We kind of like walked over, and of course you you had to say goodbye to Gary and mm-hmm. Mark because you know you you wrote the blog and everything, and they were interested in your work. And mm-hmm. um, Dieter was there; they were all kind of chatting, and and we kind of said goodbye. I was like the shadow; I was kind of in the background. But Dieter and I locked eyes, and he said, "Good luck." It was pretty epic. Yeah, it was I pretty have awesome. To say. Yeah, it wow. was very directed at you. And very, it, oh yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I'm getting chills again just thinking about it. <laughs> but but yeah, it was a a once in a lifetime opportunity and I don't know, I'm I'm super thankful and grateful that it all kind of worked out and thank you Emily cuz you, you 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 honestly made the whole thing happen. Like I I would have felt wrong going there <laughs> without bringing you, so I'm happy it all worked out. Yeah. Um and yeah, thank you thank you guys for listening to this and you know, I don't know. I know this is kind of a weird little midweek podcast, but um, I hope you enjoyed. And uh, let's see what what other things we did on the podcast. Oh, do you want to shout out your Instagram? Sure. Um, okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I shout out mine. We end the oh, podcast okay. like. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, if you guys have questions, feel free to email them to Minor Details Podcast. I know we haven't had a question episode in a while, but. We'll get around to them eventually, hopefully. <laughs> uh, minor That's actually deta- my favorite part. You should. The questions? Yeah, okay. yeah. Minor details podcast at gmail.com. Um, like, subscribe, uh, follow iTunes, Spotify, YouTube. I think this one might go up on YouTube. Not really sure. Um, we'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, uh, our intro and outro is uh, by the awesome Kiyoshi the Kid. And as always, I am at... Nick P. Baker. And I'm at not Emily Angle. And uh, we'll see you later. Bye.